Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Fellowship in Essential Oils. This week we're diving into ginger, Liz. We are, and I love ginger, so I'm looking forward to this. Interesting. For me, it's kind of one of those, it, 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 it's there, but it's not what I'm always reaching for. But as I've been thinking about it over the last few days preparing for this, it, it definitely has its role again in the aromatherapy world. So, yeah. Yeah, and for, funnily enough, actually, I went shopping this morning and in the supermarket and I picked up the roses that I got behind me. And I picked up some and then I went to, uh, another lady picked up the orange ones. I said, oh, those are just what I'm looking for. And I said, oh, because I'm doing a video about uh, about ginger. And she said, oh, can I ask why? And I told her. And uh, she says, you know, she says, I've never really used ginger before. She said, but suddenly I want to cook with it all the time. And I said, oh, that's really nice. And off I went around shopping. And she called me up halfway around the shop. And she went, can I just ask you all the things that it's good for? And I went, you can, but I've got to get on with shopping. This is going to be a really long list. So I broke it down really quickly for her. But, yeah, there's a lot of intricacies to um, to ginger oil, not least because there's so many different extractions. So ordinarily, most people work with the essential oil of dried ginger although because you don't see fresh ginger so often it's not usually written as dried ginger but it is extracted from the the, uh, the dried ginger but as i say there is also a fresh ginger uh, essential oil which is what i love um mm. I, I look i really like them both and the funny thing is i don't really use them that much on myself especially the dry the dry ginger but i do use it on anybody really it comes to me because i just well, we live in a cold damp environment here and it's so warming and drying for somebody in ludlow near the and or in wales or those kind of damp places it's absolutely fantastic because it's so drying because it's so warming and so i can see why you might not be so into it because it just sends the body temperature up and you don't want to be any hotter than you are already very true yep i live in a dry hot land yep exactly so what's interesting is i mean presumably you have smelt dried ginger as in dried ginger that you make cakes with and you have smelt fresh ginger that you cook with have you yes i have yes so you know that they smell really different. They do, yeah, true, true. Yeah, so dry ginger is really earthy. It's got a kind of mellowness to it. But when it's fresh ginger, it's zingy and sharp and mm. what? Well, it's very vibrant kind of uh, of scent. But if you look at the GCMSs of the um, the oils, you would expect them to look really different. They don't. They look really similar. Um, and so that's really interesting. And the properties are very similar, um, which are things like they are antimicrobial. They're very good for warming and for drying. I was always taught any kind of situation where the body's struggling to deal with moisture. So things like diarrhea or um, keep on weeing yourself or sweating or any kind of those things dries it all up. Um, and aches and pains definitely um all of those things fantastic whichever extraction however and i have to say i'm not really a co2 girl i don't usually use the co2 extractions very often although i can see the reasons for doing them they just don't talk to me but of all the co2s i always use ginger co2 if i can mm. and uh, apart from the different extraction is that the cms different and and improve or is it just the aroma um the gcms is different so yeah. i will explain what co2 extraction is in case well for people that weren't at the master class because we talked about this quite a lot at the last master class didn't we but i will explain it again so if if we are extracting an essential oil what we will do for the most part is put plant matter in the bottom of the still we will boil water so steam pushes its way through and as the steam goes through it collects oily molecules goes along a copper tube a spiral and then you cool it so you put it into like ice water and then of course the steam then condenses that back down into water 
and you have the water at the bottom, the hydrolat, hydrosol, floral water, and then the essential oil is on the top. So two sort of main reasons why um, CO2s and other herbal extractions will be different from an essential oil is first, steam isn't that strong to be able to lift big molecules. So a, a, quite often, for example, in frankincense, people talk about how boswellic acid is very good for cancer. Um, but, but boswellic acid is too big to be able to pass through distillation. The, the steam can't lift, lift it. So that often happens um, in different things. But also, oily constituents go through, watery constituents do not. Mm -hmm. um, and so what happens in a CO2 extraction is when we learn about uh, states of matter at school, we learn solid, liquid and gas, don't we? But not all chemicals have those states and CO2, carbon dioxide, has a state that exists between uh, water and steam. So, and that is called a supercritical state or a hypercritical uh, state. So, what happens then is when something is CO2 extracted, it's put under high pressure CO2 and it gets trapped in this other state between uh, gas and liquid. And so, a lot more molecules come across. Now, in the case of ginger, two important molecules come across, which are gingerol and shagales, which I hope I've said it right, but who knows, to be honest. I always think it like, sounds like something like a, of a Japanese fighting, you know, <laughs> you know the shagales. <laughs> it sounds like you should have some kind of samurai. <laughs> but they are really, really important, not only for helping with sickness, but also pain. Um, and they really work on neuropathic pain, much more strongly than the essential oils do. But definitely essential oil will work for nausea, for uh, any kind of motion sickness, morning sickness, somebody keeps on being sick, all of those things are helpful. And in terms of aches and pains, if you're treating something like rheumatism, arthritis, the heat of the ginger is enough in the essential oil but if somebody's like comes to you with chronic pain over a long period of time then it's kind of the next step up it's a much stronger um oil to use mm -hmm. yeah now i i submit where i i use ginger the most is for that digestive issues and it's my number one for any kind of nausea all the ones you listed my sister when she was getting morning sickness when she was pregnant it was absolutely helpful for that Motion thickness as well can be really, really great for that as well. Um, what was I going to say? There was another thought on that. While you're thinking, just move closer to the microphone. You're starting to break up a little. Oh, um, I'm just trying to think what my other thought was. No, it, it's totally lost. What were we going to say? I've gone blank. That's okay. So yeah. apart from nausea, what other things might you use it for? Do you use it for anything? Oh, that, that's what I was going to... Hold on, what's happening to my brain? I'm going to edit this bit out. <laughs> <laughs> um, trying on me. Oh, now obviously we're going to talk about this a little bit more in our master's class in February when we're talking about love and intimacy. With its warming attributes, would you say ginger would count as an aphrodisiac oil? I think it's... <sighs> You definitely could use that, you know, if somebody needs thawing out, you know, if there's kind of, it's cosy, isn't it? And mm. that kind of, you think about Christmas when you smell dried ginger, you think about happy celebrations, you think about kitchens and warmth. It's very difficult to be, to have the hump with somebody. And you, when you've got that around you, you know? So, yeah, yeah I would say, I, I wouldn't say it was specifically for sexuality, but I think in terms of repairing or bringing a couple back together or reminding each other why oh, we've got this lovely family and what look what we've built, all of that exists within Ginger, I think. 
Yeah. Well, I guess when we look at also ginger being a rhizome or a root, and I think you've got a little prop there to show us what it looks like. I do, I do. Like yeah, so to, to clarify, rhizome and root is not the same thing. No. Uh, so the, 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 the roots actually grow off the rhizome. So the rhizome sits in – so what I'm hoping I can do is sprout this and plant it in the spring. So roots will come off this. And yeah, I've sliced it a bit and it's kind of fleshy and sharp and juicy inside. So you like the rhizome, rhizome sits like that and then leaves come off that way and then uh, roots come down there. So it's a big chunky old thing, ugly and gnarly old thing, but yeah, just. Smells great and, and uh, is amazing as well. So obviously yeah. being amongst the earth, it is still very grounding and stabilising and very empowering in that way. And I yep. find this is where it kind of lies in with that, the, helping us with our digestion and the digestive system and the nausea, and then bringing that into a bit more, helping us to digest not only things, but when we're feeling queasy, we're feeling disempowered. And I find ginger is one of those really powerful oils for helping with impact, helping to bring back someone's um, empowerment when they're feeling, you know, in a state of victimised or or don't don't know what to do you know when we're feeling disempowered we feel queasy don't we we feel like oh i don't know it's overwhelming and ginger works not only the physical but also on the emotional and the mental level in that way as well yeah so that's quite kind of similar to what i talk about i find it's very useful if you kind of have that feeling of oh my god stop the world i want to get off so mm. many so many stressful changes are happen happening. You're under pressure. The world's kind of suddenly gone kajunk and thing, and everything's well. My husband had a horrible diagnosis recently, and suddenly the whole world went. Pew. Yeah, ginger was great for just going. Just stop. Wait, wait, wait. Let's just take you off the travelator in the in the airport. Stand still for a minute, and you do like. I always think when you go on the travel later, you get off it and your legs carry on going, don't they? It's a very strange thing when you get off. Ginger goes, oh, just a minute. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I think ginger's also great, especially as we're talking about this at the start of a new year. A lot of people get very excited. All new year, new, new prospects. What are we going to do? And that type of thing as well. Ginger works really well, I find, with the aspect of responsibility. Now, responsibility sometimes feels like a bit of a dirty or a heavy word. You know, when we're children and something goes wrong, my parents are like, who's responsible? We're like, oh, I don't want to be responsible. But this idea of taking responsibility for your life and how it's turned out, it's so easy these days. And we see it, you know, when we were younger, Liz, I'm sure there were warnings on hot, hot cups of coffee warning this could burn. You know, and I've heard, I, I think I've heard Engl a couple of English comedians joke about putting the warning tag on hair dryers, do not use this in the bathtub. Um, yeah. And all, all those types of and things. And the toaster. Then, yeah, and, and the toaster, <laughs> exactly. But being, just choosing to be responsible for how your life is turning out is instead of giving your power to everyone else, it's bringing it back and going, well, if things, if I don't like how my life is now, I can blame the government, I can blame my parents, I can blame my partner, I can blame the economy, or I can be responsible for how I'm responding and how I'm doing things. And ginger, when we do that, when we when we have that empowerment, we're not queasy anymore. We don't feel the nausea or the um, the disorientation. So it's a really nice one for bringing you back to your power and going. I'm going to be the, the cause of my life rather than blaming other things for it. Yeah, and, and obviously it's an Ayurvedic medicine. It's one of the most important Ayurvedic medicines. So if we think about how it reduces vata, because vata is cold and brittle, so reducing that brings warmth, but it also brings substance and strength to things. Um. It's not really an oil that I would recommend for skincare, but mm. Vata skin is brittle and flaky, so ginger brings that down, although I can think of a million other oils so it would be better for skincare, but, but it does do that. It also is incredibly good for appetite. So if somebody has been ill and doesn't want to eat, because it also makes your mouth water, of course. Mm. Um 
it's invigorating to kaffir. So if somebody has constipation or feels very sluggish or bloating, all of those things are helped. But one of the reasons why I say I don't use it so much on me, even though I really love it, is because it's invigorating to kaff, uh, to pitta. And pitta dosha is already very hot, all very already very reactive. So for me, that would be too strong on my skin. It would make my tongue even sharper than it is to be like my th my thoughts are already very fast. It makes your thoughts go faster. Um, but the reason why it's so invigorating to all of the doshas is because it um, fuels the fire of an yi. So A-G-N-I, an yi. So that is the metabolic fire of the body. So that, of course, fuels... Uh, metabolism so it definitely will uh, speed up um, metabolism but also fat burning I'll tell you a story about ginger in a minute um, but also that metabolic fire is about thoughts about drive and what you'll say to me later I'm sure what planetary rulership it's very much Mars uh, rulership that you are going to go after things. You are going to fight for things. You are going to stand up for yourself. Um, so all of those, all of that comes from that metabolic fire within the body. So as I'm sure all of you all, all, all already know, I am always on a perpetual looking at diets for, for a, a very obvious reason. And uh, I lost a lot of weight about... Well, when I first had the dog, so what, 2015. And a friend of mine is a tea dealer. And I was talking to him about some hibiscus tea. And he said, oh, why do you want that? And I said, well, I've seen this uh, um, clinical evidence that it reduces the hip-waist uh, ratio. Fantastic. He said, let me know how you get on with that. He said, but also try this ginger tea. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I do like ginger. I'll do that. So I made my ginger tea in the morning thinking, right, this is going to fuel my body. And at that time, Dexter was still at junior school. And I would, this hill that we had to climb to school, I used to call it Mordor because it was so steep. And it was always, it's very steep. I can't do it now. But um, so I'm going up Mordor and I'm getting hotter and hotter and hotter from the ginger. And I get to, sc uh, to school and like, like a, an inferno tomato headed creature <laughs> i'm so hot from all this ginger and everyone's going are you okay is everything all right of course i had flame red hair as well at that time so i had this walking fireball on this ginger tea and yeah I get back to work and i'm like right i'm going to do this i'm going to do that and i've got that job done i've got that job done I've got everything my brain was so clear i was thinking so tremendously I went to the toilet the next day. Oh, my God. I thought the bottom had fell out of my world. <laughs> the metabolism was so fast. I had diarrhea for days. So, wow. So, yeah, it, it was a real tremendous case history. Everything heated up. Everything sped up. Everything went. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, a, it's so, I mean, it's quite a, a it's quite a good way of learning just how strong a herbal medicine can be by by doing that, you know, just trying a tea and, and going uh, overdosing. Of course, I overdosed. I need to get thin, but uh, yes. I won't do that again. <laughs> yeah. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> I also wanted to share um, a little, little tip from more of a magical spiritual point of view. Um, because of exactly what you're talking about, this ability for it to raise not only metabolic energy, but also magical energy as well. So when people are doing anything from, you know, creative visualisation to spell work, whenever we're sending an intention out into the universe, wherever it may be received, what we're doing is we're kind of visualising something within us, raising a little bit of energy and sending that out. So, you know, a simple example would be when we blow out a birthday candle. We're like, this is my wish, and it's done. We don't put too much energy behind it. So imagine, like, I'll just make it up, that we're sending out five units of wishes out into the universe. What if we could increase that? We've noticed that me and Liz have been talking about this session. We've been talking about how ginger keeps raising energy and lifting energy and bringing warmth and that kind of thing. 
So there are different ways you can raise energy. And some people use movement, some people use breath work, but ginger of all my essential oil collection is my number one for raising energy. So if you've got a wish, if you're doing a spell, if you're doing creative visualization, if you're doing your energy healing, and you want to raise that energy instead of doing five units and you want to break that 50 units, inhaling and doing some deep breaths of the ginger, bringing ginger in, feel that energy within you, and then say, transform that energy in what you want it to send out and send out to the universe. And I find ginger premier for raising energy whenever you need to really get an intention out there into the universe. Yeah, I agree with that. And that was a really good reminder. Thanks. Um, another time that I have used ginger, and it's and I'll talk about it because it is really counterintuitive. So around about the same time, I suppose, 2000, no, maybe 2018, uh, Kathy Skipper was um, and I were talking about her work with menopause. And at the time, I was having hot flushes. And to anybody who has not had a hot flush, hot flush is not just about the heat. The They made me feel anxious. I felt like the walls were coming in. I was very jittery. It was not, not a good thing, not a good thing at all. So any recommendations of how to get rid of a hot flush were very welcomed. And she talked about how she felt that hot flushes were a lot about unresolved anger that women had and the way that the body was churning its way through it. And she felt one of the ways to tackle that rather than trying to reduce the energy would be to bring the temperature up more, allow yourself to get really angry and to process that, to come into the like the crone energy. Um, so given that I can sometimes be the embodiment of ginger. I thought, oh, I'm going to go with this. I'll give it a week because if let's see what happens. And in a week, it, it stopped my hot flushes. Wow. I did go incredibly hot. I did argue with the whole world, but that was the end of the hot flushes. Interesting. How, how are you using ginger in that context? Not as a tea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, topically, I just use... Uh, I. Um, tend to use things topically on my chest because that's my weak area unless there's a reason to like if I've got belly ache or back aches or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I use on my chest because it's always like a, a prophylactic to keep it keep it good. So on my chest so I could breathe it, it was going in topically and as I say, within a week my hot flushes had gone. Interesting. And when I think of as you're talking from a metaphysical point of view, I'm thinking, you know, I spoke about this when we when we discussed cardamom, is I find anger and passion very, very similar. Anger yeah. doesn't have that outlet, whereas passion does. And, you know, you, you mentioned before Mars. Mars is often referred to as the planet of war. And, and I think sometimes it gets dismissed as, oh, it's war. But no, it is about motivation. It's about passion. It's about that drive. And I think ginger can actually, yeah, quite rightly so, maybe help when we are feeling angry to feel empowered to take responsibility for how we're feeling and then to actually direct that energy out. And you did that in voice. Yeah, and, and when I, I looked at the uh, – and actually, if peop, if if anybody – I don't it wasn't specifically on this channel, but if you have a look on the rest of my videos on my channel – there is a lecture about the um, essential oils of menopause that she did, which is very good if anybody wants to visit that. But it was when I kind of reframed it in my brain as like, is this anger just keep coming up and I'm coming and I'm pushing it down? Is the energy trying to come up and, and then my psyche just goes, no, you're not supposed to do that. When I encouraged it to come up, my God, it was like a volcano, but it was burnt out and then that was gone. Then that was it. That was the end of the conflict. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, absolutely amazing. I love that story. So we both agree on Mars. What about yeah. your chakra? What chakra? Um, I, I don't think one. I think lower chakras. So, uh, and, and that applies for the fresh and dried ginger. So I definitely think root chakra energy in terms of feeling safe, in terms of excretory illnesses. Uh, I think sacral chakra, we talked about it being um, sexuality, but also this idea of 
the root chakra is I need, the sacral chakra is I want, and this idea of uh, mouths watering and, oh, this is my creative fire going, you know, um, and also the solar plexus because that's digestion. What's mm. your thoughts? Being the purest that I am, solar plexus for me, um, from, from that digestion point of view, but also from that empowering point of view. Obviously, when our solar plexus is overactive, we dominate. When it's underactive, we feel disempowered. And when it's balanced, we are feeling equal powered with other people as well. So I find it really, really great. You know, often when we think about the solar plexus chakra, oils like lemon or um, bergamot come up and bringing a bit of ginger in there can really help to almost fire up. So I'd use it more if you had an underactive solar plexus chakra, self-esteem issues, feeling a bit shy, feeling inferior, things like that. That's where I'd really reach the ginger in the um, context of chakras. Yeah. And if, and we, we kind of skirted past it, but it is such a good antimicrobial. So if you've got things like respiratory problems, if you've got um, problems with circulation because of the way it warms the body, so uh, Raynaud's disease, cold hands and feet because of chemotherapy, all of those things. But uh, be very careful about putting it in the bath. Um, actually, so I'm going to do a quick plug. We talked about the CO2s. This is uh, Madeline Kirkhoff's book about CO2s, absolutely fantastic book. And she articulates something that I had thought but not really kind of said out loud before, and that is you put it in warm water, it empower, it makes the heat of the oil so much hotter. Yeah. So, yeah, it is one to watch putting in the, um, in the bath. But also, as I've said, the, the dried ginger and the fresh ginger have really similar properties. But in terms of their ability to blend with things because they smell so different you can create a huge new library of blends if you've got both and it is a cheap oil to, uh, to you so your your fresh uh ginger is so good with the citruses because it's it smells citrusy you would imagine it had tons and tons of limonene in it it doesn't um but it's beautiful on that side whereas and so if you like want to be motivated and you want to wake up in the morning and all of those things whereas the dried is much like we're let's just calm we're still mm. going to be strong we're going to be dynamic but but much like deeper notes almost like they blend with like the resins the woods that kind of thing so you have a whole new library if you get both oils yeah and when you're saying that grounding it's not kind of like a, a vetiver type of grounding is it's more of like a empowering more like a like you said a cedarwood or a frankincense of like standing in yeah. your own power yeah exactly and i do and, and i'll say it again this idea of stop the world or want to get off you don't mm. when that happens you're not doing it because you want to sit down you want to stand still and stop being dizzy you stop feeling nauseous yeah. um you want to just be able to stand still and kind of get your feet again don't you that yeah, is definitely. very much a um, a ginger kind of uh, feeling. Amazing. Now, we obviously have our next masterclass coming up um, in early February. The links and the discount code are below. Just in time for Valentine's Day, we're going to discuss intimacy, love, and soulmates, plus all of the questions that may arise as you listen to each of these episodes as we lead up to it as well. Is there anything else you wanted to give us a plug to at the moment, Liz? No, just to, to kind of add to that, really, um, I have a book on Amazon called Fifty Shades of Fragrance. So that's all about using fragrance for for sexuality. So we'll be talk, talking about sex drive, lack of um, libido, all of those things that um, you might, you know, people uh, people perhaps don't want to go out and ask so the masterclass is a really safe space. Mm. However, what I would say is if there's something that you want to ask me and you don't feel very uh, confident asking in front of everybody else, we can always stay behind afterwards and talk about it. So any kind of issues about sexuality, about seduction, any of those things, we'll, they'll all be up for grabs that night. Yeah. If you're also shy about asking and you'd like us to tackle it in that um, two hours as well, you can pre-send pre through the question 
um, and then we'll tackle it live. If you can't make our ma- any of our master classes live, because we do rotate the times a little bit to accommodate for everyone around the world, then what you do is you you send us a question, we answer it, and you can watch it in the replay because everyone will get to, to get get the lifetime access to the replay as well. So there's, all your answers will be questions. So don't be shy. And if you are feeling shy and a little bit scared to talk about sex, get your ginger out. It's really good for that. Until next week, we will see you very, very soon. Look after yourself and go get your ginger out. Have a play. Take care. Bye-bye.